Hey everybody, it's your pal Drew Dracy with another unboxing video. I just ordered some Marvel Masterworks from In Stock Trades. Uh, they're great. They got great discounts. And uh, I pretty much buy most of my hardcovers from them with the uh, exception of like something that may just come out and I'll, I'll you know, purchase it. Uh, impulse, that's word. See, I can't cut and talk at the same time. That's how, what a moron I am. So here we go. And with the good old exacto knife, uh, people at home, be very careful with these things. You, know, you might have a letter opener that works, but this is an exacto knife for artists. And uh, you open this bad boy up. Um, I actually ordered two masterworks recently. Excuse me a sec. I actually ordered two of these recently. And uh, the reason is I'm replacing one of my Marvel masterworks. I'm going to sell it on eBay. Whoa! Chaos erupts. Okay. <sighs> the box is just open. Okay. Let me tell you, the in stock trade guys and gals, whoever, they do a great job of packing. Great job of packing. I mean, look at that. It slips right in there. Ah, the latest Captain America Marvel Masterworks. Now, I swore to my best friends, to family, to everybody. Actually, I just swore to myself that I was never going to buy anymore because. Uh, I caught up on all the epic collections. I didn't really need to buy this because I had the epic collections. Well, I've always been a sucker for Captain America. I mean, I was young and impressionable during the Bicentennial, and he had the Kirby had the Bicentennial Battles, Captain America Treasury Edition. So Cap's always left an impression on me, uh, and he's just a, always been a fantastic action hero. Here we are going to do the legendary J. M. Demetrius and Mike Zek era. Uh, oh, by the way, I am keeping the epic collection that contains uh, part of the. Uh, this has is in there because uh, I had J.M. Demetrius sign it at a show. Uh, there was a convention in Atlanta, and he was there. And once I found out he was there, I went home, got my epic the next day, and he signed it. We talked about the Beatles and stuff like that. Well, I also ordered this from a while back, the second year of Kirby. And because uh, I had the black and silver cover, and you know, you might think, Drew, you know, you're just pissing away a lot of money on these uh, uh, masterworks, but I don't buy a lot of books, period. I mean, I just sort of, it's like this could have been, I don't know, like for the same amount of money, I could have bought like 10 new comics, and half of them I'd like or half I would. So I go with a short thing because I'm old. <laughs> and uh, well, this is, I had, I have the black and silver cover, and I just, was being OCD. I had to have them all blue marbled. Uh, but I'll probably reread it again because it's it's good run. And uh, yeah, so I'll just replace it with the other, sell the other on eBay. And uh, well, I remember the short time Roger Stern and John Byrne and Joe Rubenstein were on Captain America. It was glorious. It was probably the best, probably the best. Uh, the book has been since uh, Steve Englehart. And I know I'm skipping over Kirby's second run. It's great. But Kirby kind of took his two years and created the Kirby verse. He kind of segregated all the uh, his books from everybody else. So he wasn't keen on crossovers. And uh, his one of his last efforts uh, was, um, uh, was uh, Captain America Annual Number 4, which Archie Goodwin kind of... Uh, you know, begged him to add a, a Marvel character in there, like, you know, super villain or whatever. And uh, that's why Magneto showed up all of a sudden. I was like, holy cow. And uh, going back to this real quick, there's also an issue where uh, they leave the Stark Dimension, uh, Falcon, Cap, and Country Jack, I think is his name, or something else. They escape into a portal heading back to Earth. And then Bill Mantlo, genius that he was, that same month he built on that story and had they're returning but also one of those ugly green monsters came out so uh uh that's what makes it really cool is um you know mantlo would if if kirby was going to come to the mountain the mountain was going to come to kirby although kirby was a mountain of it man as far as the comics industry and everything else uh well okay here we go cap frank miller cover and uh they probably chose this one because it's more symbolic than it is uh st telling you the story inside this is a annual uh, drawn by uh, Gene Colan and inked by Dave Simons, who I mentioned recently on that uh, Ghost Rider 
dog video. Okay. Limited to. Come here. Ah, well, gotta get this off first. I gotta do it carefully. Because if I don't, I will cry. Okay. Very gingerly. When you do this, do not be in a rush. Do not be in a rush. Okay, in case I was off camera, I wanted to show you a slit across the top. I was at a slight. Well, I was at a slight angle when I did it. But I always make the exacto blade face upward. So I'll just recreate it with the bottom, even though I don't have to. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay. Go along there. And. Ah, perfect. In order to put your exacto blade back in the place where it belongs. Because if you don't find it, it has a way of finding you. That's just the long and short of it. Okay. So, Captain America and Iron Man, and uh, I think uh, those are the ones in Ghost Rider are the ones I'm going to keep buying, even if I'm double dipping. Uh, and I can always donate the Epic to the library, as I want to do. Uh, yeah, they got a nice healthy library when I was doing the, the big purge of a lot of uh, extra books I had, you know, looking up on my shelf saying, am I really going to read that again? So there we go. Uh, just came out. Whoa. Okay. So, Inker's Finishers. Blah, 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 blah. So, Rick Magyar, I know him. He's a superstar. He is such a great anchor. I worked with him across Jen. And uh, just a really cool dude, you know. He, he's like, I mean, he he's seen a lot of great bands in the seventies, like Devo before there were anybody at Akron, Ohio, at the small club. Oh, great opening by J.M. Demetrius. I hope I say your name right. Because actually, when I talked to him, I didn't actually say his name. I just said hello. Okay, here we go. Start of a new era. Now, a few issues prior, uh, uh, my exec had done a fill-in issue with Dr. Octopus, which was really great. So this is official where, uh, there's the team. Quick Draw Studios is the anchors, but before long, you will have the mega-talented John Beatty on the inks. And they work uh, later on on Secret Wars. See, like that, that's not like a Beatty face. I don't know who did that. I think, you know, this is one of those books that Marvel had to get out. So, Inker's Assemble. Like, back then you had to live in New York City if you were going to be an Inker of uh, any regular regularity. So, but uh, I got lucky. I did, I, not that I don't like New York. I've been there a few times. But when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, I was like, I ain't going there. It's scary. And I thought Central Park really was a made-up place like uh, Gotham City. Because the only time I'd hear Central Park... It would always be these lovers sitting in the back of a carriage ride going through Central Park and somebody comes out of the shadows and says, oh, give me your money. Ah. And then Spider-Man would web them up or whoever was on scene. So I really, you know, when I went to Central Park, I'm like, hey, this is a real thing after all. Well, beautiful, uh, beautiful line work because uh, as, as good as the epics are, uh, the line work has not been uh, restored but here we can see everything that was intended to be on the page uh and he's using the this guy's using the nomad uniform that uh nomad uniform that uh, uh cap used when he briefly quit being cap uh just really enjoyable stuff and it was just i was i'm saying to myself when these guys came on i'm like i hope they stay on because you know, after Burton uh, Stern left, there was like a year full of uh, fill-ins. And some were cool, some were dreadful. So, oh, God, I hate this. Now, I know I've been talking to some people uh, on uh, line about, I can't couldn't stand these ugly-ass giant, you know, uh, banners going across the top. And it's something so, I don't want to say like, you know, we had a, trip to see Superman, the movie, uh, be part of it in 78. This was like, hey, when a 10-speed racer, and it kind of makes it seem like, you know, back then it was helping the uh, only only kids or stupid adults read comics. 
So see like a and you can see like Zach's getting more and more familiar and comfortable with uh, the book. I mean, it, his previous work he had done was on Shang Chi, Master of Kung Fu, and he did that for like a year or two, and it was really, really good stuff. Really, really good stuff. And what's funny is even before that, he did some work for uh, Charlton Comics. He did like a couple of the horror titles that they did, or at least he did the covers. And uh, they're good. The uh, guest star by the original X Men. This is an alternate. This is an alternate. How do you say alternative? <laughs> alternate universe. Ah. <laughs> and here we go. That's what I really show off. I mean, it's great, but I still. Even though Gene Cola was kind of, you could tell he was kind of getting a little tired of superheroes, possibly, because he was doing Avengers and kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't think he cared for the scripts much, but it, when he went over to DC, he got to do Batman, and he got to do Nathaniel Dusk, which I've covered before, and he got to do other stuff uh, that was more grounded than superheroes, and uh, uh, what else was that, Silver Blade, he just did a lot of stuff that was more his, uh, his background, you know, but I still loved seeing his stuff, no matter what. You know, and, and, you know, there are times where the anatomy can be wonky, but, you know, he's going for immediacy. He's going for, like, in the moment. It's like the shot's almost between the moments. And it's kind of like, it's just like Kirby. I mean, Kirby was never a slave to uh, good anatomy. He just sold a story on sheer action. Uh, this kind of reminds me of the famous uh, doorknob scene in uh, Daredevil 22 or whatever that Gene Colton had done. Uh <laughs> So this guy, he's just, ah, shit, I don't even know what I want to tell you. Although, this one gal hits on Steve Rogers. It's pretty fun. I do remember this much. Um, you know, he gets ready. For, uh, Steve is also still a commercial artist, which happened. Roger McKenzie and Sal Buscema established Cap as a commercial artist for, oh, issue 237 or so. So we're like 30 issues later, he's still doing it. So he's coming in for a meeting. And I love this second panel. That face. It's so perfect. I just love that expression. Just You don't have, the, have to have the word balloons to know that she's thrilled to see him. You know, I heard a lot about you. You're, you're causing quite a stir among certain elements of the advertising world. Would you care to show me your stuff? And... Uh, <laughs> She's like, oh, very nice. We have a future at Concept Inc., Steve. I like what I see. So she's like hitting on him. <laughs> Your artwork not bad either. Are we see over dinner sometime, although we could talk. Uh, I'm sort of had a plan for tonight. I'm sure you understand. She goes, ah, agreed. I'm sorry, Mr. Rogers. I'm afraid you're not quite what we're looking for right now. Mrs. Pemberton will show you out. And he's like, women have changed since the 40s. Things were much simpler then. But hey, you know, he's a walking, talking stud, I guess. Uh, he's got a couple years on him. He's got some smarts. Got a solid job. Well, solid as a freelance artist is. I really deviated from the story. <laughs> My own silly opinions. Uh, Dave Simon's using some great uh, zip -a tone effects. Or it could be do -a tone That's where they... Uh, you print something on a sheet and you use a special chemical to bring out the uh, dotted effects. Wally Wood was huge on that. But I just love it, it's, I mean, Simon's is perfect for. Uh, well, I'm not going to show you the last one because. Well, bah, 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 bah. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. Bah, 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 bah. Okay, here we go. Look at that cover. It's so bold. Love that. Love the gray in the background. How they really stopped using gray a long time ago, but uh, they brought it back for this issue. And I think George Roussis uh, did the colors because he was still like, well, Bernie Severin was the color cover colorist on a lot of books. She became the layout artist when Kirby left in 1970. She did that for several years and she went back to production and, you know, occasionally doing uh, interior work and, uh, uh, but then George Roussis, who uh, he was the anchor on uh, some early Fantastic Fours, and he also colored a lot. Uh, he did. He co-inked the Incredible Hulk issue of Ghost Rider that I showed you last episode, uh, or two episodes ago. I don't remember. <laughs> it's all blur. It's all blur, man. Now we got the salt. David Anthony Kraft is stepping in. He is mostly known for doing an amazing 
year after an already amazing year of Steve Gerber on Defenders. He somehow managed to go even further in his own style. Good stuff. So JM hasn't really... You know, I don't know if this had to be done at a certain time, or JM probably had other demands. He was working for... Uh, he was also working for DC. He was probably wrapping up some... And you know what? This is old fogey B, middle-aged B. I love these flat colors. I like this, this light blue... Uh, and this purplish gray, it makes for a nice background. It makes everything else pop, you know. And, uh, you know, if it was colored today, it would probably outshine the figures. And, but it all depends on the colors. I mean, some of the best colors are like Laura Dupuis, uh, excuse me, Laura Martin. And uh, there's just some really great ones out there. But there's some that just kind of, eh, you know, got Spider-Man in there. What's not the like? What's not the like? What's not the like is if is the uh, there we go is the focus. Okay, really great stuff going on. So, and it was sort of there. Uh, they spent three years on it. Then they went to Secret Wars, which the less said about. They're, they were very unhappy with what happened, and I could see why, because uh, Shooter was stepping in, constantly making last-minute revisions, and just pages that aren't even by Zek that are credited to him, and uh, it's a real shame. But we still have this, everybody. We have three years of work of Mike Zek, Captain America, and there, uh, his girlfriend, uh, Bernie Rosenthal, is at the drawing board. Uh he gets a psychic, uh, basically a uh, boot to the head. That is beautiful. Look at that. Whew. This is, like I said, limitations. It's like just a couple colors. And I, I, I wonder if Dave Simon and the colors actually uh, talked about this. Chances are, because it's real, real solid stuff. I don't see any, you know, anybody dropping the ball. Really good stuff. Oh, this stretches over to Defenders, which is, uh, this was... Uh, the book Jam the Bad Ice had been on for quite a while. Doctor Strange. I have to do. I have to do an upcoming episode on uh, psychics. One of the, the one that was the uh, girlfriend of Tony Stark, <laughs> and that crazy story. I should say crazy. That's inappropriate. I should say Jam the Matthias, my exec John Beatty, and uh, oh Bob Sharon's a colorist. I love. He's one of those colors that really stood out to me because he did Rob Space Knight and I think he did the Micronauts. And I really liked how he made them work. Team America was a toy team that came out of the Minos <sighs> motorcycle craze. Uh, and basically it was a toy line that was uh, refurbished toys that um, Evil Can Evil or Awful Can Awful. Uh, it was based on him, but... He went over to some reporter's house and beat the shit out of him with a baseball bat because the reporter said something bad about him. And he'd also done some domestic abuse. So he, he basically wrecked his career more than he ever did. With his actions more than he ever could have on the, you know, jump jumping the cycle. So uh, just, I don't know, moron. So they made Team America and Jim Shooter was a, a motorcycle enthusiast and he decided to create this book. It lasted only a year. It was kind of... Yeah, it was all very done slapdash, you know, I guess just to get the name out there. But uh, before they arrive, uh, you know, I guess maybe the regular team was asked to introduce us to him. And, uh, you know, they're very, like, typical. You know, like, he's like the straight guy, are you ready, is the uh, wild guy, and the Wolverine of the group is El Lobo. Uh, so... I would hate to have been Zek and have to draw his friggin' motorcycles. God, they're a hassle. So, this big old globby thing comes out. This is the bad thing. Uh, up to some shenanigans. But, okay, you'll see some uh, original art here. I love the yellowing of the uh, photo stats and whatnot. Ooh, Bob Sharon. Joe Rubenstein. Wow. That's cool. I love it. That's definitely do a tone. That's definitely do a tone. Wow, it's beautiful. So he basically 
would overlay either pencils or use a light box and uh, he would paint in this gray that you would see uh let's see ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, the biographies give me a second let's see if there's any more original art not really but uh oh a piece from the uh, Fred Hembeck uh, Marvel Fantastic Four roast. Uh, each page was done by the uh, then current creative team. It was such a. You had Bill Sienkiewicz on Moon Knight. You had. Oh my god, you had so many people guessed in this story. Well, there we go. I can see how many pages we got here. Uh, about 266. I'm going to add maybe 15, so it's about 280 pages. Uh, slightly thinner than some of the others, but you know what? It's about right. It's just about right. They. They paste these out pretty well, and uh, well, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna belabor the point. Although it's past belaboring the point, it's 21 minutes, and I've been jabbering like a moron. Well, I hope you enjoyed this at least, and uh, check it out. Good stuff. Love it. Talk to you later.